Emily grew up on the spotlight. She's a very famous dad called Jeremy. But uh, she says she's just a pretty normal girl battling everyday issues that all women, women face, uh, except though she's saying, I have had enough. Yes, and she's had a blog for quite a long time, but now she's written a book. Can I speak to someone in charge? Um, and you were a bit cross when you did all this, weren't you? You're getting a bit cross about yeah, life. And a little bit. A little bit cross. <laughs> I wonder who you get that from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I get asked that a lot. I try and remain, like, as positive as possible in it, because I am aware that's quite like a... I need to speak to someone in charge. That's quite like a scary sentence, but I do Is try... it one you use a lot? No, <laughs> that's the thing, like, you know, I'm really bad at confrontation in real life, so I haven't used my writing. <laughs> like remember. imaginary confrontation. Kind of, it's all the stuff I wish I'd said or could have yeah. said or maybe should say. But I think actually reading about you, that was part of this, because you were having a rant about, didn't you go and try and buy something in a, in a shop, <laughs> clothes shop and thought, what do you yeah. do, you don't go past a size 12? Well, that's, having a bit yeah, of a rant. Totally, well, it wasn't even, I was just shocked, like, and it happens all the time, you know, I remember the reason I started my blog was in... 2014, I tried to go shopping and I tried to buy a dress and I got it stuck, like so stuck. And it, they didn't stock bigger than a size 12. And I was sort of sent home, like I, I physically couldn't buy that top. And I got home and I kept hearing stories about it. And then I was looking, I was trying to online shop and I just saw they weren't stocking bigger than a size 12. And I was like, this, the national average of size of women in the UK is a size 16. 16, yeah. And what are they supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? And like, it makes you feel really bad about yeah, yourself. Yeah, it makes you feel rubbish. So it just, it, to be honest, I was furious. I wrote a piece and... So your you... blog was Pretty Normal Me. Yeah. And so that's how this, the writing really started. Yeah. I didn't have anywhere to put my ranting yeah. <laughs> at the start, so I, uh, I made somewhere myself. Um, yeah, and it's kind of gone from there. Do you think you'll change anything? I hope so. I said when I started it, if I could make one person feel better or help anyone feel less on their own with anything they're going through, yes. then I've done enough. And in what ways do you think girls in particular feel on their own? They feel this, I'm the only person in the world this is happening to. Yesterday we had two young girls and we were talking about selfies and the mm. pressure they come on yeah. under and because apps, of things like because that. Because people, you know, face tuning or yeah. whatever they call it and, and they're saying that what they're looking at isn't real and yet yeah. they're comparing themselves yeah. to it. No, of course. But that's it. It's like we live in a crazy world and once you've edited a photo of yourself, even you're not real anymore. Mm. So you look at that photo and you compare yourself to yourself. Like 6 a.m. in the yeah. morning and you look gross and then you look at that and you think oh my god like you, you, you can't even look as good as I did yesterday and then you're in a whole world of trouble so I so when you were asked to write the book was that yeah. something you looked forward to were you excited about it oh were you god, nervous yeah. but yeah all those things yeah. um I couldn't believe it like I, to be honest I really feel so lucky and I really feel like I landed on my feet with it and I, it was amazing uh, Simon and Schuster a girl called Abby got in touch and I thought she was kidding she's like do you want to <laughs> write a book I was like yes <laughs> um, but, yeah, I've been doing it for two years and I just... I, and you've I built up a lot of ammo in those two years. Legal <laughs> stalkers, uh, body hair comes in for a, for a chapter as well. <laughs> Catfishing. Ruth and yes. I were talking. I, I didn't know what catfishing we didn't know what was. This was. You, but yeah. you've been a victim of this. I have. I was catfished, which for anyone who doesn't know is catfishing is when someone poses as someone else on the internet and befriends you. And for whatever reason, often it can be very, very sinister and often it can be sort of more tragic. But either way, it is very scary to be a victim of. Um, and I was catfished when I was 15. And looking back, I'm like, how was I so stupid? But actually, everything was so, who so was convincing. This, so you thought it was what, a, a I boy? I thought it was a boy, yeah, because I was 15 and, yeah. you know, a boy wanted to talk to me. Um, and he said he was 19, he said it was in the army, and I was... He gave me no reason to doubt mm. it, and maybe I didn't want to, but anyway. Turned out, after I had child protection services, I had we had a PI, we had a police involved. So, but wasn't it your mum, Francine, that was Francine, started to get yeah, suspicious about it? she did. This. I think alarm bells went off in her head, cos I said, you know, he's going on tour for six weeks, and she's going, yeah, no-one mm. goes on tour for six mm. weeks, so she went and did a bit of her own private investigating. Look, we've only got a minute yeah. till the, we to the, uh, the weather coming up here, <laughs> and I just want to envisage this scene. Old Jezza is lying in bed, and he's reading your book, which is fine, until he gets to chapter... Uh, uh, about uh, dear, is it dear body, dear my body? Yeah, no, that's not so bad. It's dear boys. Dear boys, oh, dear boys right? <sighs> yeah. What happens? 
It's all the things I think boys should know about girls. So it's. <laughs> but your father shouldn't but necessarily. Father really shouldn't Not know about, about you. me, probably. <laughs> I, I couldn't think about him when I was writing it, but as I handed it over, I did think, oh no, like, we're just not talking about that. Chapter. Well, listen, he is an amazing writer himself. Oh, he's he makes friend. me laugh out loud, his colleague. Yeah, of the he, week. he's an incredible writer, and I'm glad that you've inherited or you've learnt at the <laughs> master's knee for this. <laughs> Lots of interesting dilemmas. Can I speak to someone in charge? And it is there by Emily Clark. Thank you Thanks very much indeed. Thank